How do you make your photos look like this, 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 and this? Today is that video I'm going to show you how we do it all. My name is Mutemwa and I'm a photographer based right here in Nairobi. And today's video I'm going to show you how to manipulate your images in Photoshop. So guys, with no further ado, let's get into the video. And also stay tuned at the end of the video, I'll show you where I get my backgrounds from. So guys, let's go. The first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to duplicate the image. So Control J once to create a copy. Then I'm going to select the subject. So now that my image is selected, I'm going to make sure I perfect the selection to have the edges as smooth as possible. So just zoom in and then perfect the quick selection to just make sure the selection looks realistic. And now after the selection, I'm going to create a, to create a layer of the selection alone. So I'll just select. And then after creating a layer of the selection alone, what I'm going to do now, I need to create a selection of the background alone and make sure I separate the image from the background. So I control and press on the selection, then make sure you select control shift and I to invert the selection and then control J to create layer of the background alone. And then what I'm going to do, let's just call this background. What I'm going to do, I'm going to drag the background down here, just under our main image or under our main image with the selection. Let me just call it in the layman's language. So what I'm going to do, I'm going now to load the background which I've already downloaded on my image. And I'm just going to put it just on top of our background selection. So go to file and then select place embedded. Then I'm going to pick one of the backgrounds right here. Just pick this one. And you can see right now it's on the background. I'm going to enhance it to make sure it fits on the background like that. Zoom in as much as possible. I think that's not fitting. Let me look for another background. So at the end of the video, I'll show you where I get my background so that you can download as many as possible and you'll be trying which one will fit on your image as you proceed. Let's see how if this fits. I think this this looks nice. I think this this one will fit yeah. This this fits perfect. Okay. Now after I've framed my image the way I want it or how the subject will sit on the background. Now after adding the background, I'll change the blending mode of the background to add light. This is to make sure the image is sitting very well on the background and all the subject is sitting well on the background and it will look as realistic as possible. So let me add, change this to add light. And you can see now after changing to add light, it has made the background as realistic as possible. And what I'm going to do now, I need to play around with colors to make sure everything looks amazing. So I'll come just under the subject, under the main image with the selection and also on top of our background, I'm going to add a selective color layer and then I'll go to neutrals and then play around with the colors and to just create nice looking colors to make sure the image looks as realistic as possible and also to make sure the colors are not so far away from our model's outfit. So perfect. Then after that, I'm going to reduce the opacity of the background lightly to just make it um, not so much in focus, but also still look amazing. So just reduce the opacity of the background slightly. Perfect. Then I'm going to create a layer, a mask on the background, and then I'm going to pick my brush tool. I'll make sure the foreground color is black because I need to make sure the shadows are as visible as possible, the shadows of the outfit as it was looking on the main background or on the studio background. So I reduce the opacity to like, I reduce the flow of the brush to like 10, and then just brush on the shadows of the dress to just make it look realistic. All right, so far so good. I feel it's looking nice. Yeah, I like how the image looks right now. So I'll just come create a mud layer on top of uh, the main layer. That is, we'll have now the background and the subject well matched together. And now I need to proceed and work on the combined image. So I'll just crop this to make sure the image looks like far away because you can see our background is like a mountain. So I need to make sure the image is not so close because maybe if you're shooting an image on a model, the image, the model will be like slightly far away and maybe you'll zoom in, zoom in to cut the model. So I need to make it create that realistic illusion of the same. So I'll crop, just change this slightly. 
I need the model. I need the model to be slightly far away, so I create more space on the sky and more space on the foreground. Okay. And now after that, I need to remove this black part right here. You can see this black part right here. I need to remove it all to make sure. And how I'll do it, I'll use the generative fill in Photoshop to just fill and make everything look amazing. So guys, after, after the cropping, you can see after filling, we have this really, really nice. It has just adjusted the whole background to make it look as amazing as possible. So what I'm going to do, I need now to play around with the uh, fi filtering, that is the colors on the background and also the colors on the model to just blend them together. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to select a new adjustment layer right here and select selective color. Then I'll go to black. Then I'm going to reduce the blacks slightly like that, right? And this on the overall image, I haven't selected the background or selected the subject. I'm just playing with the colors of the overall image to just make them blending together and make the image look as realistic as possible. And then come right here to the science. I've reduced the blacks to negative 11. Let's just play around with the science to see how the colors looks. And then the magenta slightly. Perfect. And then let's play around with the yellows like this. Now I feel that looks really nice, so I'll just go ahead and now select blues on the selective color or on the same. And then just play around with the blues to see. And you just play around with this to get the colors which you feel fits for you or which you feel are fit for you. So I think that looks really nice, perfect. And then I'll just go ahead and select Another new adjustment layer and that's brightness and contrast and just I'll make sure I click right here use legacy and push the contrast slightly like that perfect and then I'll zoom in the image slightly to see how the edges look because I feel the edges are blending perfectly with the background but you can see when we when we add, added the generative fill we have this sharp line right here and we really don't need it in the image so I'll just go ahead and create another merge layer on top of all these layers. So Control, Shift, Alt, and E, right? And then I'll pick my selection tool, this patch tool right here, and just draw on this line right here. And then just generate, because I need to make sure the line is smooth. If it doesn't work, I'll just use the mixer brush to just blend it in to just make everything look amazing. Perfect. You can see now it has blended perfectly, so there's that mislike on under the model and then, then then these other rocks around the model so that looks really nice and when you're using generative fill it gives you different options you use the ones you want but sometimes i just use the first one because it's already looking perfect all right let, let's just put everything now in a group and see how far we have come with this image so this is how our image looked immediately we loaded it in Photoshop and the black edges right here is where we cropped the image and now after you can see how far we have come with this image and we have made the image look stand out or look more realistic on a different background and look even more dramatic but you can go ahead add vignette add, vignette, add uh, different colors play around with the image to just make it stand out but up, up to that point I feel the image according to my standard it looks already really nice what I'm going to do I just need to add more contrast on the edges and on the shadows to just make everything look amazing and I'll go ahead and select levels adjustment layer to just do that so I'll just press alt or option if you're using Mac and drag the blacks inside like that and then control i to invert the layer oh, Jesus. control i to invert layer then pick your brush make sure the flow is at 100 opacity 100 and just foreground is white and just right here under the dress when you're using lighting sometimes if the dress the dress creates shadows under the model, so that's why I need to make sure the shadows are visible so that you, 
the image can look as realistic as possible. So, before and after, before and after, that looks really nice. Right? Then you can add the same on the background to just, because sometimes if the background is slightly far away and maybe you're shooting with high speed sync, the background tends to be slightly darker than the, well, if you're using high speed sync, the background tends to look dark. So we want to make it appear the same on this image. So just darken the background slightly, mostly on the rocks and the hills behind to just make everything. Yes, before, after, before, after. I feel that looks already really, really nice. So let's see how far we have come with this image before, before and after, before and after. So you can see how far we have come with this image. And yeah, that's how I normally manipulate my backgrounds to just make the images look amazing and look different. So let me show you where I normally get my backgrounds. And the website where I get my backgrounds is the Adobe Firefly. And you can only access Adobe Firefly only if you are paid for your Photoshop. That is both your Adobe, your Adobe package. That's either both Lightroom or uh, Premiere Pro or uh, Photoshop. So you just come right here and generate a uh, prompt. You, prompt the background you want to be generated for you or the image of the background you want it to be generated for you and you get as many options as possible. It, the prompts on normally comes in three different images so you download the ones you want and you can keep on prompting until you get the type of image you want and then now you can use that to manipulate your backgrounds. And so guys, that's all for today's video. If you enjoyed the video or if you learned a thing or two or if you feel you need more clarification, just comment below and make sure you like this video so that it can be recommended to as many people as possible. And I'm trying to keep up and to create as many videos as possible. So guys, don't forget to comment the kind of video you want us to create for you. So see you in the next one.